you said in another interview, there is an intervention of star beings every time that there is a rocket launch. Do you remember saying that? So it's interesting because, you know, like people say that, of course, you know, when we, when we decide to launch a rocket, you know, we're always looking at the weather and looking at a whole bunch of different uh, variables that can interfere with the launch of the rocket. And of course, even then we scrub so many launches, right? So it's pretty obvious that you can't plan for it to the point where it can always go right. There are lots of variables in the equation. But one thing that I've also noticed is that there are times that in the morning of the launch of the rocket, they say that the weather is not looking good and therefore we probably will have to scrub it. And then in three hours, the entire everything changes and then they're able to launch it. So I've seen it both ways, right? I've seen it reverse in both ways. And I have had engineers come to me and say that they were seeing crafts right at the launch site that moved in ways that nothing can move, at least nothing that is designed by human can move with the speed that it was moving or, or, or there were certain motion that they were doing that the craft is not capable of doing. So I had people actually come to me and say those things. So the point of the story is that we have, we have data that shows that there is an intervention. We have a data that shows that not only that they just, that there's an intervention that's invisible, but there's intervention that's visible. Like there are crafts uh, like lurking around, right? At the launch site when these things are happening. There are times we have launched when we are testing to kind of make sure that we can do certain thing and things happen that's just completely unexplainable. You know, when we were doing the missile testing for the target. So my philosophy is based on years and years of hearing these type of story is that because I do believe that everything happens for a reason and everything that happens has also a reason. You see, there's two different distinction there. So it's all about, you know, making sense out of these information. And I say that the reason when we do, like when, when we blasted the atomic bomb, right? When we do launch a rocket, Whenever we do anything that is going to take us into that projectile motion, we are interfering, not, you know, we are interfering at the larger level, right? I mean, every single action that as a human we take, we are interfering with someone, right? But when you are doing something as big as rocket launches, mm -hmm. then you are interfering with all there is in existence at the larger level. So there are beings... Uh, definitely I've always believed that there has been intelligence other than human, right? There's intelligence in different form and in different dimension and in different places. This intelligence has its way of showing up in, in your life depending on what they're going to get from it. So whenever we do something as big as rocket launches, then we are interfering with these intelligence at the level where it changes the shape of humanity, the shape of our history and our future and also their future. So you said, depending on what they get from it, so uh, the non-human intelligence, what do you think they want to, what are they seeking when they're uh, hanging around a, a pre-rocket uh, launch? What, I think what? that, I think that every single time when we're launching, of course, we all always have an agenda, like everybody has an agenda, we have an agenda, sure. right? Yeah. So whatever that agenda is, it's kind of like a Jacob's ladder, right? Because we take that step and then we have another step afterwards. So when we're going to initiate something like Artemis 1 launch, which happened with the Space Launch System rocket, that is like putting a first break in building a big giant house. Hmm. So when you're about to do something, it has a huge agenda tied to it. It has a huge intention tied to it. Now that intention is moon colonization, Mars colonization. So then it is connected with, because the time does matter in terms of when we are showing up for each other to trace each other into the material existence. So therefore, it's important that when something like that is going to happen, it has to be placed in a specific position so it can align with all the other synchronicities that needs to happen. So it kind of goes into like looking glass technology. Like you're looking at everything. Like if you look at holographic fractal reality and you see one input, right? And then how that creates the web of all these things, right? So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that an intelligent being has already seen the outcome of what we're about to do. They've already seen it because it, they've already lived it? 
Because first of all, they already have a technology to see that. When you watch, I mean, most of the sci-fi movie gives you a very good idea on how perception and time and experience and all of that becomes relative because when you really start going into depth of all of these events, for the most part, what we think is really has happened to us and the continuity of it is only a perception. So when you really go into that aspect of existence, then for intelligent being to pretty much know or understand more than we know is kind of a no-brainer. And, and, and that's why, yes, knowing what, what it is and knowing what it is not, that type of interference does occur because it has impacts that goes beyond our comprehension. So uh, to bring it to what people in, in quote unquote, in the office see, so you talked about the, you mentioned the other engineers have seen this. Are you an anomaly in your thoughts on what these things might be? Or are there others uh, who share, other engineers who share these thoughts with you? I think I'm definitely the anomaly, but not just in my engineering world. I'm the anomaly in every aspect of my life. <laughs> when I really, like wherever I go, I definitely feel like an anomaly. Like it's almost like, for whatever reason, I was born with, with being the pattern buster, being someone who does not represent any kind of norm whatsoever. 